We're going to start off this episode by building the bottom of the fuselage. Going to have to get the plans out and use the pattern to cut this bottom piece and the two side pieces that go on there. So we'll get set up and do that. Welcome back to Frank's Model Aviation Workshop. This is episode 29 in the Top Flight 60 size P40E Warhawk build. This episode we're going to close in the bottom aft fuselage, work on making the fuse fillets to match up to the wing and hopefully the belly pan on the wing. So uh, if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. Hit that notification bell so that you can be notified when I upload new installments of the build and like and share my videos. I really appreciate it. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I think you'll like uh, what you see here. So let's get started on this thing and see how far we can get. Okay, so first things first, we gotta make our bottom fuselage pieces. And here is the right and left fuse corner blocks. That's for the quarter inch uh, balsa. This is for the eighth inch bottom fuse. So the way I'm going to make it to where I can transfer that under that, I'm going to extend these lines out so I can see them beyond the balsa wood. And I'll draw the lines on, I'll place this on there. I'll see my lines, I'll draw them on the balsa wood and then I'll cut it. So let's get started doing that. This needs to be close. I'll do that on the sides as well, but I'll I'll do that when, it, when I'm done cutting this one. Now I'll just put this on here like this. And I think I might even tape it to where it don't move. Might even come all the way down here as far as I can go. See my lines. I'll start with this top line. And I'm going to go outside the line because it's going to get sanded off anyway or planed off. Good. I'll come around on that side to do the other one.
cross line. All right, that'll be that. Then we'll cut her out. As always, you want to start off with a fresh blade in your knife so that when you're cutting these cross grains, it's not going to tear the wood, it'll just cut. So I'm going to start with doing those cross grains first while I have a fresh blade, and then we'll do the long side. I've already previously put a fresh blade in this knife. Try to make your cuts as square as possible. Alright, this ain't long enough, so I gotta go to the big the big metal ruler. Once again, I'm leaving the line. You don't want to try to make this cut in one fell swoop. You want to just lightly start your cut and then gradually add pressure because if you try to make it all in one go, the grain is going to grab your, your uh, blade and move the ruler. There it is. There's the aft bottom sheet just gonna test fit the piece see where it goes now you see how the landing tail gear is going to be in the way so i'm going to mark this and put a center hole right there so that i can just weave it on there and glue it on so that's that Okay, right here I marked my hole. I, put, I even uh, used a 16th inch drill bit to give me a pilot hole. And I got my tail well bracket. I got to drill 1 8 inch holes through both of these. So uh, we'll get set up on the drill press and get that drilled. Okay, let's drill these out. <laughs>
do that. Okay, I uh, I up the size from one eighth to five thirty second, and my reason behind that is I want to keep this nylon bearing, a nylon tube, above that bottom sheet. Like when I go to put that bottom sheet on, wherever I put it. That way, when I go to put my glass on, I don't, I'm not getting any epoxy resin down inside there. And uh, I think that would be a better alternative than to uh, use the one eighth hole. And I'm gonna go with that. I see no reason why I can't. So, you know, you can do what you wanna do on yours, but uh, that's the way I'm gonna do this one. See what happens. Still, it's, it'll still, uh, it'll still work. So that's what I'm going to do on that. Five thirty seconds hole. That way the nylon bearing comes through and I'll glue that nylon bearing to the wood. And it'll all be locked in place once, once all that bottom is closed in. Also, after you uh, are sanded to shape and glassed, Whatever nylon bearing is sticking out, I'm going to cut flush with the bottom of the fuselage. That way you won't see that nylon bearing. You'll just see this, the landing gear coming out. So that's what we're doing. So this is basically what it's gonna look like once the uh, everything's glued down. And after your glass, you just take and cut that flush with the bottom of the fuse. I think that's what I'm going to do. That way I don't have to worry about putting uh, Vaseline down in there. You know, and then after your glass, just cut it flushed and you're good. Okay, the plans say to wet one side of this to bend it to a slight curve to match to the bottom of the fuselage formers. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'll just wet a paper towel real good. Not much of a bend, so I don't think I need to do any like uh, ammonia or anything like that. I'm just gonna soak it real good and let it soak in, and then I'll I'll just bend it by hand at first. It'll probably even start to bend itself. Just kind of massage it in your hands. Be careful around that hole because you might split it. Starting to get soft. Just giving it a slight bend. Don't need to be severely around. test fit it and see what it looks like. And before I glue that tube, I 
And before I glue that tube to the uh, sheeting, I'm going to rough it up so glue will stick to it. So I've got a good form on the bottom of the fuse formers. So I'm going to get the set up to glue that. You don't glue this plywood yet until after the bottom sheeting is glued on. So I'm going to tape this on where it needs to go and then I'll flip the plane over and we will uh, apply glue from the inside. I'm going to tape just where the formers are. I'll start back here on the tail. I'm going to go up here to this one, making sure that it's even. Now we'll go here and pull them down fairly taut to make it conform to that roundness. And I'm going to apply I'm going to apply tape to every former section. Now this one up front here, I'm going to have to run the tape just back of the former because I can't get to it. Just like that. I have this sandpaper here as a uh, kind of like a gauge to where I have a gap there. And I got always like... even you know what I mean so that's how that's gonna go now we'll flip the plane over apply the glue I'm gonna use thin CA at first and then I'll put a, a gap filling medium CA on either side of the formers and then uh, up here I'm gonna have to cut about an eighth of an inch off because for some reason the former is behind there it needs to be on the front so when you put those side blocks in they're resting on the former right now they'd be out in outer space they'd be bluetooth to that former so we'll get this plane flipped over and uh, get this bottom piece glued on and then I have to epoxy that tail wheel plate to this bottom sheet so that's what we'll do next that's probably the best I can get you for this. So I'm going to run some thin CA into there. Get this thing out of the way.
Let that sit for a little bit, and then we'll come back and uh, put the medium CA in there. Okay, now I'm going to go through and put the medium CA on. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to glue this on with about a quarter inch sticking out. I'm going to use thin CA on the inside to glue it to it. Should want to take a drop. Next step is to glue or epoxy that tail well bracket to the bottom sheeting and the former here. So we'll get set up and do that. One gram, it <laughs> went to zero. I'm just gonna eyeball it. Roughly one or two grams of each, just 50 50. Bring this mixer up and smear some in there. Using 30 minute epoxy.
want to make sure that's even. Put a little epoxy filling on top of that. that dry for a little bit and we'll flip her over and put these bottom two left and right pieces on okay so i took the wing off made my marks right here as you can see i need to trim about I don't know, an eighth to three sixteenths off here on both sides so that when i lay that side piece in it'll rest on that former there and I went ahead and I mounted my rudder on here. I don't have it beveled yet. And the reason but for that is I want to make sure that it's contoured perfectly with the fuselage. All this has to be tapered round, you know, tapered really nice before I uh, start making any more contour. So I won't be sanding any of this to a taper yet until I get these two side pieces on. And uh, I might even have my rudder mounted when I go to round this back area because I want it all to blend like one continuous piece of the fuselage. Then when I go to do my bevel and you see the plane, it'll look like it's supposed to be nice and tra the tra transition is gonna be nice and smooth. There won't be any hard angles or anything like that. So right now, this is what it looks like. So you can see, I'm gonna have to take some down. And, you know, it's gonna have almost all of this down to the very one eighth base. So we'll work on that once we get this, uh, once we get all that bottom closed in and we get these two side sheets on. So I'm still waiting for that epoxy to dry. Once it's dry, I'll get going on those two side sheets. Okay, the next step, we're gonna get ready to trim these fuselage sides, and then we'll sand this bevel here, and then we'll cut this quarter inch balsa blocks to go on either side. We'll get set up to do that. I know it's gonna be a little difficult to see, but I'm gonna draw the line down. As straight as I can draw it. That's why I'm using this clear ruler.
That's what I got to remove. I'm going to go do the other side too. start on this side. I might use my razor saw to get this side, to get this over here. That'll be a good start. And then I'll cut leaving the line and I'll sand to it. This one's got to be a little more difficult because, you know, I'm right-handed. So I'm going to have to cut using my left hand. Once again, I'm going to leave the line. Okay, I like that. Let's take this tape off. So now what we're gonna do, we gotta sand this, this bevel here. Now, I'm gonna start by sanding this to the former, and then I'll work on this because you don't have to take as much off the fuselage side because they're, it's pretty much already there. You just got to bevel it. And back here on the tail, can be a little tricky because uh, of the way it's shaped. So I still have to bevel it, but I'm going to have to take some of that aft uh, fin block out or angle it away. So. We'll work on that next. So we're going to start, of course, using my permagrit. And I'm just going to kind of keep the permagrit at the same angle as these formers that you see there. And we'll just kind of match up that angle using the 80 grit side first till we get close.
So you get the idea. I'm gonna put us in fast speed and then finish that up. Okay, so here's what we got so far. Got that side done. I'm gonna flip it around and do the other side. And yeah, as you can see, you want it to be flush with that former. You know, each former you want it to be flush with. So that's how it is. And I'll flip it over on this other edge. I kept dinging my dang uh, stabilizer with my sanding bar, so I put a t-shirt over there to protect it. I'm gonna do the same when I flip it the other way, but we'll get this other side to sand it up. In fast speed, of course. All right, we got both sides beveled. Now we're gonna get ready to put the uh, blocks on the sides. I use the same method for uh, cutting the quarter inch as I did the eighth inch. You just extend your lines and then make your outline. I'll cut this and I'll use this as a template for the other one. I put a new blade in my X-Acto and I'm gonna start with the cross grain first, just like the eight. Take a little longer to cut through because it's so thick. And the nice thing about having these cutting mats like this is it won't dull your blade as fast. Remember to let the knife do the work. Don't, don't like force it in there. You don't wanna have the ruler move on you. Make the parts smaller or bigger than you need it. Better bigger than smaller, but you know what I mean.
piece. Now I'm gonna take this, flip this over, because in case there's any deviations in my angle, at least I'll have the, the right outline. So I'll flip this over on this, bring it a little bit closer to the end. And just draw around it. I'm going to change blades. We'll fine tune all these when they're on the airplane. Let's we'll put these next to each other. It should be mirror images. And they aren't. But they're good enough. <clears throat> Got a box full of scrap wood now. So let's see how this fits on there. Alright, so I'm going to have to adjust. I'll show you. Now you'll see, when you go to place these on there, they're going to be close, but we'll have to adjust this angle here. I'll do that by sanding it, and once I get that, the back end, I'm not going to worry about. What we're going to do is we'll get this thing set up, and we will... Uh, glue it on. I'm going to pay more attention to the bottom part than the top. Yeah. So what I did, I sided down this former here and I drew a line. I'm going to sand this off 
at the correct angle. So when I butt this up against, it'll be 90 degrees to the former over here and flush up against the side of the fuse. I'm going to do that on, on the uh, edge of my table. I tried not to drop anything, but it did anyway. I wanted to show you how that fit. So on the tail end, I'm just putting it up to the, over here, just put it to the top of that peak there. And over here, I'm pushing it up and I'm lining it up to where when I glue this, it's gonna be covered in no gap. So as you can see right there, It's already 90 with the former. I don't know if you can see it or not. Yeah, you can. 90 with the former. Matter of fact, we can even sand it flush once once we get glued on. It'll be, we have a little bit there, and it's also butted up against here. So I'm going to start by gluing this side on, I believe. Or maybe I should get the other side ready, too. Because I'm gonna have to tape these, so you don't have to tape them on. Okay, I'll get set up to do that. Okay, I'm gonna start by gluing one side on and holding it for a minute. So I make sure I get it aligned properly. I'll do that, and then. Once I'm sure it's tacked good enough, I'll glue the other side on and then I'm going to tape this up. So wish me luck. Oh boy. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to do it like this so the, so the uh, CA doesn't run. Let me try that. Using thick CA, give me time to mess around with this. Making sure I got plenty on there because you don't want it to set up before you're ready.
Okay, that was on. Do the same thing to the other side. Make them stand up a little bit. Dry fit. Boy, oh, this stuff burns your eyes when it starts to kick off. Holy mackerel. get this bottom closed in I marked where the formers are on here because I don't want to put anything where there isn't a former. Okay, so I went ahead and I flush fitted this end, got my rudder hinged up, and I got it taped tight to the vertical stabilizer. When you do that, you want to make sure it is running straight with the fuse, which it is. I know it looks a little off center because I got, you know, some of this sawn off, but I already have this bottom part already shaped up. 
it's shaped up to the top. I just need to shape this stuff to the fuse. And I'm gonna have this on while I shape up these bottom blocks. So I'll get set up and we'll start doing some carving. I'll probably razor plane at first and get them close to the fuse, you know, get them close to this and the fuse sides. I don't want to use the razor plane to do any shaping though. I'm just, I just want to use the razor plane to get the, the, uh, the top or the bottom blocks, side blocks in line with the fuse sides and bottom. That's so that we'll get set up and do that. Okay. So we're going to razor plane these edges down to the sheet down to the fuselage sides on both sides. And then I'm going to cut me a strip of uh, 180 and we're going to do the old shoe shine technique on the, on the uh, rough areas to get them smooth round, making sure that we don't shoe shine too much on this because there's only an eighth of an inch here. I'm going to concentrate more just on the edges and uh, we'll get this shaped up and I'm going to get this shaped up and blended in nicely with the fuselage. Hopefully it'll end up looking pretty good. So we'll get going on this and uh, get this thing shaped. Okay, we're gonna start off by razor planing just to get it level with that 1-8 sheet and level with the fuselage side. I just want to bring you in and show you <clears throat> a little bit of what I got here. You see why I waited to bevel that. I still got a little ways to go, but it's shaping up with the fuselage sides. Okay, this is what I was shooting for with the tail, the rudder. Minus all the dings, of course. Um, I'll just have to fix those before I do the final sanding. But this is about, the rudder is about where I want it. Just got to tweak it a little bit. Still got some sanding to do around here. Here, I haven't even, haven't even touched up there, really. I was just wanting to get... The hardest part out of the way. Those dang ribs are a pain in the butt. But I got it pretty much conformed to the side. I still got a little sanding to do here. It's conformed to this side. And, you know, it basically follows, <coughs> follows the air, airplane. That's what I wanted. So that's that. I'll continue on with the fuse now.
Okay, ignore all the dings. <laughs> this is just the uh, rough sanding, rough in. But uh, this is the bottom fuse complete. Completely roughed in, I should say. Still got a little bit of touch up stuff to do, <clears throat> but I'm happy with the way it's turned out. Not too shabby. It's still got a little bit of, a little bit of uh, stuff to find sand. So what all we do, we closed in the bottom of the fuse Got the hard part done, blending this. This is what really catches my eye whenever I look at a few, uh, any kind of warbird. If this doesn't uh, flow with the lines of the aircraft, it really shows up to my eyes anyway. So I wanted to make sure that was right. Now I can bevel the rudder. Uh, I got quite a mess to clean up. I was going to do the shoe shine method. I might still do it to touch up. But I just got going with that sandbar and wanted to get her done. So I just went ahead and got her done. So I hope everybody likes the way it's turning out. I'm happy with it. There's some guy on YouTube building another one. I think his name is Mike. Anyway. His is looking really snazzy. He's got the, <clears throat> he's got his uh, fiberglass on already. He should be done here soon. So that's it. That's the bottom. Next step is the uh, wing fillet. And I think I'm going to do that on the next episode. I am uh, a little bit beat. I gotta work tomorrow too. Well, that's gonna do it for uh, episode 29. Uh, so what we did, we uh, put the bottom sheeting and blocks on, shaped it up, and shaped up the rudder. Everything's all sanded, rough sanded, I should say. Next episode, we'll get to do the wing fillets and the belly pan. So. Uh, That'll be it for now, and I uh, hope you liked what you saw. If you got any uh, comments, gripes, questions, leave it down there in the comments. I'll tr I uh, try to look at my comments every day. So if, uh, if you like what you saw and uh, you're not subscribed, which if you are subscribed, I really appreciate it. But if you're not and you, and you like what you saw, go ahead and uh, consider subscribing to my channel. And you know the deal. Uh, Hit the notification bell and like and share my videos. So until uh, episode 30, thanks for watching.